Greetings and welcome to another Lucas Spruce video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Airfix Henshaw 123 and having a little build of it. The box contains four sprues molded in grey and one clear set for the windshield. The kit has minimal details for the interior and raised surface details and rivets, so it's definitely showing its age in terms of detail. But it still fits together perfectly and it's pretty easy to build. First of all, I cut out the bulkhead and the seat and glue them together along with the two fuselage holes. I then glued the seat in and then proceeded to add some extra little details using some copper wire and some polystyrene plastic sheets. I cut out some ribbing for the internal structure, rudder pedals and the panel, and then used poly cement to glue them to the cockpit walls. Some bits of cut up spare sprue were also used for cylindrical tanks and some of the controls. I then used super glue to glue some copper wire to form a control column and the various levers and cables inside the cockpit. Next I moved on to the engine, which was nicely detailed, but based on reference photos it was clear it was missing some piping, so I used super glue to attach some florist wire to the cylinders of the engine to form these extra details. I then set the engine aside and prepared the landing gear. I sanded one side of the wheels so that they would give the impression of being slightly flattened by the weight before gluing all the parts together. Moving back to the cockpit, I painted it all in two layers of Tamiya XF22 Ireland Grey before painting finer details such as the instruments, levers and various cables and tanks a mixture of colours including XF16 flat aluminium for the seat and some chipping, XF1 flat black for the gauges on the cockpit, and the levers and extra details were painted using X7 red and XF3 flat yellow. The final touch in the cockpit was to dab a tiny bit of X1 gloss white onto the black surfaces of the instruments and then I glued the fuselage halves together. As they dry I used bulldog clips and masking tape to firmly press the sections together to avoid any gaps that would later need filling. Once the cement had fully cured, I then glued the cowling with the machine guns and instrument panel to the two halves and then set them aside and glued the landing gear and bomb racks to the lower wing. I painted the engine flat aluminium along with the propeller and I painted the inside of the engine cowling in RLM grey. Next I painted the crankcase for the engine in dark grey and then I used a very fine brush to apply some titanium gold along various tubings for the cylinders and also on the exhaust system. Moving back to the fuselage, I glued the elevators and their respective struts to the fuselage before moving on to finishing up the engine with a heavy wash of flat black. I use a little bit of water to make the paint thin and then apply it all over the entire engine. This then flows into the cracks and the various recesses of the details, making them stronger and also giving the engine a more oily look. I finally glued the lower set of wings to the fuselage and after holding them in place as they bonded, I then joined the struts to the lower wings. With those parts then attached, I could glue the upper wings to its supports. This step was the hardest out of all of them since you have to line up all the struts perfectly and the middle ones were especially flimsy joining the fuselage to the upper wing since they are very thin, but I eventually got there and the parts fitted alright. Once the wings had been joined, I glued the steps to the lower side of the fuselage and prepared the aircraft for painting. First of all, I apply a wash of flat black all over the entire model and the engine cowling, similar to what I did to the engine. By applying black paint that's been thin, it will flow into the various recesses of the model, helping to highlight the surface detail. Usually this technique works better with kits that have engraved panel lines, rather than the raised surface details of these kits, but the effect is still quite similar as you can see. You'll notice I kept the engine and the fuselage separate so I could more easily paint the area behind the engine cowling and not accidentally paint any exposed engine details. I chose to do the eastern front scheme out of the box, which included the standard colours of RLM70 and RLM71 on the upper surfaces, and RLM65 light blue on the underside. I used Tamiya XF23 light blue and apply it using a paintbrush of a decent size, and trying to apply it in the same direction as much as possible to help reduce brush strokes, thus creating a uniform looking paint job. I also apply relatively thin coats of paint, by using a little bit of water to thin it down 
and also making sure my brush doesn't have too much pain on it when I apply it onto the model. This also helps reduce the brush strokes and makes the paint job look a lot neater. For the greens, I use AK Interactive's third generation water-based paints instead of the Tamiya ones, since they are of a better quality and also more closely match the German Luftwaffe colour codes, making it easier to choose the correct green. I apply the lightest colour first, which is RLM 71, in the same fashion as I applied the light blue. These paints are easy to clean being water-based and don't usually require any thinning down either, which is really good. They also come in a squeeze bottle, which I simply empty into a small takeaway cup. I follow up the first coat with the second coat of both the light blue and RLM 71 before moving on to applying the darker green camouflage on the top of the aircraft. To apply the darker RLM 70, I use a smaller brush and outline the shape of sections for the camouflage pattern before filling them in. Again, keeping the brush strokes in the same direction of the airflow as much as possible and each layer of paint thin. You could always use masking tape to help mask the camouflage as you apply it, since German camouflage tends to be very jagged with lots of straight lines. However, I found after a while my hands gotten pretty steady when it comes to painting, so I just do it by hand and then clean up any small mistakes with the following layers of paint. All three colours receive another two coats each before I'm ready to apply the small windshield, which I then use a very fine brush to paint the frames with RL70. I then use a cocktail stick to scratch off any mistakes on the windshield. By now I'd glued the propeller to the engine, so I painted the front of the engine flat aluminium along with the landing gear struts since I had the paint jar open, before moving on to painting the tyres flat black. I glue the engine to the bulkhead and now I'm ready for decals. For my decals, I simply cut them out and then stick them in water for a little bit and then wait for the details to come off of the transfer paper. Once they are loose, I apply them with my fingers and also a brush occasionally applying a little bit of water if I want to move them. Overall, the decals are of really good quality, usually with Airfix and this kit's no exception. The yellow band might be a little bit easier to paint, but I found that it actually was surprisingly easy to put on, and it also conformed to the model despite the many rivets festooning this kit. Occasionally you'll get a little bit too much water and the decal will still slide along the surface. I simply use a paper towel to dab the excess water away and help push the decal into the conforms of the model kit's surface. I also used a cocktail stick to help push the decals in where areas where the raised details made it difficult for them to get a hold. I apply a little bit of Tamiya decal adhesive on top of the decals after I've applied them and then I can move on to the weathering stage. It's a good idea before weathering to have a look at reference photos and also research what materials were used in the aircraft's construction. I also sometimes use War Thunder as a reference since they also have reasonably realistic models of many vehicles. After researching the HS-123, I found out it was surprisingly for a biplane made out of all metal, so I began dabbing some flat aluminium with a fine brush on the leading edges of the wing, on the undercarriage fairings, the propeller, around the engine cowling, the access hatches for maintenance, and also where the pilot would make contact with the aircraft getting in and out. Often less is more, but since this aircraft would have been in service for quite a long time before it arrived in Russia, it was probably quite likely that it wasn't in the best of shape, having flown through many dirt strips and had its paint stripped, and also been taken care of sometimes in rough conditions. To create the effect of dirt on the landing gear if the aircraft was operating out of a dirt strip, I got a little bit of flat earth and applied it to the landing gear and on the struts. I also used a little bit of flat earth in the area behind the exhaust to achieve a little bit of streaking along with some heavily watered down flat black to create the exhaust smoke effects. I also applied some watered down flat black around the cowling to make it look like oil had kind of leaked out around the cowling and also on the control surfaces to highlight them. Finally, I added a little bit of flat white in the areas where the exhaust were to achieve a slight burnt effect and with that the Henschel 123 was finally completed. And here, as you can see, we have the finished model kit. So, as you can see, it was a relatively easy build. Uh, it goes together very well, and the details are honestly really quite nice. Uh, the raised details and the lack of anything on the cockpit is a little bit of the uh, time when this uh, model was obviously released in 1960, but 
like I said, it, it goes together really well. Uh, you get some very decent engine detail, and uh, if you're happy to spend a bit of time like I did, you can do a couple touch-ups on the interior. The Germans, often in World War II, get this rep for being overcomplicated and building ridiculous tanks and jets and just being way ahead of the Allies, which is not always true. And uh, this, the Henshaw 123, I think typifies this. Uh, it's a biplane from before World War II, still seeing action in 1943 in Russia. A very interesting and uh, probably quite rare example of a biplane in World War II still fitting in and being in the zone. So yeah, very interesting model kit. So I definitely recommend trying it if you're interested or if you're a beginner or if you're wanting a kit that you can modify a fair bit, this isn't a bad way to start. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more, be sure to leave a like. Any comments are greatly appreciated, especially a little bit of positive uh, feedback or also some creative suggestions. Uh, if you can, please head over to my Patreon page. I've got the link in the description down below. You can support my channel for as little as $2 a month, and I've even got a few premium perks for the upper tiers, such as shoutouts, which I'll be doing shortly, and uh, also some exclusive behind the scenes stuff. I'm working on some more content like that. So uh, yeah, if you want to see some of that, especially for the stop motions, head on over. And uh, obviously this video was also supported by Tectonic Hobbies. So we're down on 447 Wises Road, Maroochydore, the local Sunshine Coast model store, basically. So um, this is uh, some of the uh, model kits we have in stock. We're a little bit limited at the moment in terms of space, but we're hoping to uh, expand our display and uh, also bring in more stuff as we get more customers since it's a relatively new store. Um, but if there's any kind of model kit you want and you live on the Sunshine Coast, come on in, have a look. If we don't have it in stock, just tell us and we will order it in for you. Uh, no shipping costs at all. Special shout out also to Patreons, Joan, J and K Jones, Emo and Archie Palmer. You guys have been absolutely fantastic the last few months. I hope you're enjoying the videos that I'm putting out. And uh, until the next time, keep building and model on.